Hey guys, Hardler Brief Dan here with a, another episode of The More You Know. Uh, I'm again talking about the new Unity 4.6 GUI. Uh, I'm going to make a couple of these videos coming out over the next week or so, two weeks. Uh, just going over some GUI stuff because um, I know it's a pretty popular video and I know uh, there, aren't that, there aren't too many videos out. Um, just so everyone knows, I still don't know a lot about the GUI. Uh, so I should, this is just me experimenting with stuff. Uh, but basically, there's one thing I uh, found that I thought was pretty cool that I wanted to share with everyone, and that's basically use how to use a horizontal grid or horizontal layout group with a cut content size fitter. Uh, so if you see over here in this upper left-hand corner, I've created this uh, text object. It's called click uh, clicked content, right? And it's actually just an empty game. O well, it's a game object with a rec transform, and uh, with that, I have a script attached, a horizontal layout group attached, and then a content size fitter attached. And these two horizontal layout group and content size fitters are uh, just components under layout. Um, and basically the horizontal group allows you to add several things within uh, like in a line and the group will like, self expand but then the content size fitter will fit to whatever you kind of like constrain the axis on or like this this fits. Uh, which this is the horizontal fit, fit and the vertical fit. So you see I have it, uh, the vertical fit unconstrained. So that basically means it can keep growing down. But I have the horizontal fit to, set to preferred size, which is set based on this text object called count. Right? Uh, so I'm going to actually go in scene view here. And I'm going to zoom in. And you're going to see when I go ahead and change, when I keep adding numbers, so one, two, three, four, five. You can see that it's moving. And so basically the preferred size here is actually the size of this text component, uh, which again is just a rec transform with a canvas renderer and then a text uh, component on it. And so what it's doing is that it's resizing this clicked content container, uh, if you want to call it. It's resizing it so that it fits all this. So if you've played a lot of games kind of use this idea basically like a high score or something where they'd have it in the upper left hand corner or somewhere where basically the more you get or let's say like a currency tab the more you get the more it needs to expand well this is a way to do that and you could do it vertically or horizontally you know it's up to you how you want to do it but basically uh, what you do is you create what I've been doing is creating a uh, game object like an image here so I'll go ahead and show you so in canvas this is just an empty or blank canvas really you can see there's an animator on there I added that I'll show you why in just a second uh, but basically in this canvas here you can go ahead and add a like an image element this is how I've been doing add image uh, and then I actually just delete the image file so I just remove the image component and it's just basically a blank um, what I call what I've been I've been calling them containers basically and what you can do like for this one let's say uh, we will call this vertical container uh, uh, we'll just say vertical C. Okay, so vertical C here, we're going to go ahead and add a component. Uh, we'll go ahead and add a vertical layout group to it. We'll add a custom size fitter like that. Uh, and what we'll, now what we'll do is we can add buttons to this. So you go ahead and add a like button. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I drag it under vertical C. And you see the button re has resized itself to take up the entire uh, content group. So what you can do uh, and the, basically, this is the reason why I did this is because the preferred size is, or the, in the content, excuse me, the content size fitter, they're both unconstrained because I haven't constrained them to anything, so it's just going to expand to the size of the of the container it's in, right? So what you can do now, let's say you have this group here, uh, and this is part of your main menu. What you can do is continue. You can add some more buttons to it. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just duplicate these buttons, and you see. This horizontal group uh, basically acts exactly like uh, the GUI layout. Not exactly, excuse me, but it acts a lot like the GUI layout that is in the old Unity GUI. Uh, and then again, playing around with these custom size fits, you can actually choose the size of your buttons and stuff and keep it so that, like, when maybe if you disable, you know, they'll all stay the same size and whatnot. But that, that's basically how you do a vertical group. Um, pretty simple uh, maybe you guys already know how to do that uh, but that's okay so we're, we're gonna go ahead and jump back to this count thing uh, where I have set up right now and I have a script set up so when I click it adds 10 to this counter so you can actually see it move uh, but basically all it is and again it's a horizontal group layout group uh, 
the horizontal layout group allows you to add padding and stuff between the edges and between other objects. Uh, I have a text uh, game object here uh, that I access in script, and then I have an image here. It's just a Unity image uh, that I've actually just attached to the count. You can actually add it in your vertical group if you wanted. Right? It's going to stretch it, uh, but it should change. So let me let's see. You see that it's still stretching because it's still part of that horizontal group. Uh, so you know, definitely play around with this because it adds. I well, I don't know if it adds, but it allows you to have a little bit more creativity and stuff. You can see I'm adding here. It's moving it. It's moving it. It's moving it. Uh, and I have it set to right click where it expands. I just wanted to show you how these con the horizontal layout group and the content uh, size fitter works because um, I actually struggled for a while to get that straight. Uh, if you see this error down here, this exception, uh, don't worry about it because I'm still using Unity 4.6 beta 17 and this is a known error. Uh, it's trying to resize the layout group and uh, they've fixed. They have since fixed it. I believe they're in Unity 4.6 uh, beta 20 or be maybe beta 21 at this point. Uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, the next thing I wanted to go ahead and show you real quick um, is how to add a animation to a button. Uh, now this is one way to do it. There are several several ways to do it. Uh, but basically what I've done here is I've added a animator component to the canvas. And on this button here I have in the center, you can see it here, I've added a, uh, well, where is it? Excuse me. I haven't added anything to the button. But what I have done is in my project file here, I've added an animation called Button Expand in an uh, animator controller called Menus. So in the animator here, you can see it's just a blank state here that I set as default, and then I have this animation called Button Expand. Now, Button Expand is literally, I'm just expanding the transform, uh, which if you guys don't know how to use the animator here, you should definitely look that up, or if, you know, write in the comments below, I can talk about it. I'm not the best with it, but I've definitely been learning a lot. Uh, but basically I've set this animation up so that the button expands uh, itself to 2 and then it goes back down to, to its original state uh, on, on click. So what you do is you go ahead and create the menu, uh, the animation controller. On the canvas you can actually go ahead and add it to your animator, contr uh, animator compo component under controller here. And then on your button you can go ahead and add a uh, trigger. So on click, I said access the canvas, and I said set the trigger expand. So if you look in my animator controller here, uh, in parameters, you can actually add triggers, bulls, ints, ints, and floats. And you see, I have this expand trigger here. I I created that myself, uh, and I'm calling that on the button. So I say when I click the button, I expand the button, and then it goes back. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you that in game. Pretty simple here. Uh, you're also gonna see the click counter move, but click the button, expands, it goes back. Uh, and so you know this adds a little bit more what you could do is uh, using these triggers you can change it so when you highlight the button expands and goes back and using the same content size fitter and horizontal layout group over here that we did you can actually set this up so that the buttons expand and then go back uh, and they stay within the same um, container like I, like I said I'm calling them so anyways uh, hope, hopefully you guys find this video kinda useful it's uh, kinda interesting how all these new GUI objects work together. It's not the prettiest thing here, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys how to make a horizontal and vertical layout group and some basic animations, uh, or basic animation, excuse me, I only showed you one. Uh, in the next video I do, uh, hopefully I can show you guys how to do some drop down menus and stuff that expand and or, and or maybe some more animation stuff. Uh, write in the comments below what you would like to see. I can try to learn it myself and then uh, hopefully I can teach you guys. Uh, but until next time, I'll talk to you guys later.